The Ghostly Gloucestershire team are here outside the Everyman Theatre in Cheltenham. A caretaker who has worked here has reported that there has been a piano playing by itself. Ghostly Gloucestershire aims to look at the paranormal activity here in one of the most haunted counties in the United Kingdom. So here we are in Presbury outside the Plough Inn and today we're going to be talking to Cathy the landlady so she can tell us more about the paranormal experiences she's had over the years. So come on in. Well, we're not entirely sure. It's listed as being a late 17th century. Two and a half years ago, it was a lovely summer's day, or summer's evening rather, and we had a customer sitting just over there at the little round table. Everybody else was outside. Her boyfriend went to the loo, and she was just sitting there like that, and uh, she felt somebody sit down next to her. And she said, oh, you were quick, and she looked over, and there was a man sitting next to her that she didn't know. She sort of did a double take and then she looked back and he disappeared. Yeah, so so we've had five overnight groups here, so they usually bring one or two mediums with them. We wait till the pub is shut. Normally they walk around the village first because it's one of the most haunted villages in the country and I think there's 55 reported ghosts here, some of which are in the churchyard just over there. Um, they usually come, they set up equipment, some of them have lasers, which, um, if you know, a laser has a steady light, so they have that all over the room, and if something a shadow goes across it, you'll be able to spot it. They have uh, listening equipment, a lot of them wear headphones, so they can pick up any really, really quiet sounds. Some of them have crystals, Ouija boards, um, all sorts of bits and bobs that I don't know how they work, and all this sort of um, electrical system that they have, and when there's activity, it changes colour from green to orange to red. I am not phased by any of the things that are in here except for a little while ago um, in the room upstairs um, I had some pictures that, sh that used to be down here and I had them stacked up in a corner and every time we had the mediums go upstairs they always went to the same corner and they said to me that it's not a person, it's a thing. Now, at the time, I never used the living room above this, this room here because it felt strange. But I brought those pictures downstairs now and put them back where they should be and now that room's fine. That's the only thing that's all a bit, a bit worrying up there. And we did have, uh, my ex-business partner and I both had an experience where we were trying to shut the back door just there and the door normally swings to with no problem at all and it was the end of the day, I was the only person here I went to shut the door and it felt like somebody was pushing trying to get in now you, you really want to sort of pull it and then push it back in again but I, I, I was sort of like this trying to get the door shut and that's, that's the only thing that's really frightened me a little bit things started to happen and um, I had a business partner when I first uh, took over here and um, he was always a bit of a practical joker and um, I think sometimes uh, whatever was here was a bit protective of me so every now and again a pen would get lobbed at him or once we were standing by the till and um, he just had a hammer in his hand and he was just waving it around like this and it was sort of joking and he went like that at me and then the light bulb above his hat just exploded and covered him in glass. You know, so it's, it's funny little things like that. We went through a stage of two pence pieces being thrown out of the till whenever you went anywhere near the till. They just pop out. As part of our investigation, we have asked you, the general public, about the experiences you've had with the supernatural. Here are Jamie and Sadie with their stories. When my mum was about 21, she moved into her first ever house. And outside her house, she had a massive tree which blocked, in, which blocked all the light from coming into her house. So she got permission to cut down some of the branches. So one morning, she woke up really early and she got a ladder and she was cutting down these branches. And as she was doing it, a really old man came and walked, walked right by her, like front garden. She started chatting to her and introduced himself to her as Terry Jones, I think his name was. And um, was just chatting to her about the people that lived there before and how nice the house is. And he said that he just lived opposite her and pointed at the house opposite. 
And my mum was like, oh, lovely, lovely, I'll, I'll, I'll come and visit you. And she just, all she wanted to do was carry on cutting her branches. Anyway, he just stayed, he was chatting to her, and then eventually he walked off. And my mum cut, carried on cutting her branches. And another lady walked up to her and was just like, oh, hi, are you new to the neighbourhood? She was like, yes, yes. And she was like, could I just ask who you were talking to? And she said, I was talking, for, talking to the gentleman, Terry, who lives across the road. And the lady said, yeah, there was a Terry who lived across the road, but he died 10 years ago. Um, when I was just 10 years old, I lived in a little hamlet village, just full of a few houses. And uh, one day, me and my little sister were playing a little game uh, in the living room. And it was night time, and all my family were upstairs just talking and stuff. And I remember from, uh, I remember playing the game with my little sister, and I remember I looked at her, because she started looking at the window, and I wondered what she was looking at. So then I started to look, and the first thing I saw was a pale, white figure of a man just standing there. And at first, I thought he was our neighbour or something. But then I just looked at his whole body, and not only was his face pale, but his whole body was just white. And I couldn't believe it. And I looked at my sister, and I remember she looked at me, and we both screamed, and we were so scared, and we decided to run upstairs, get my family. And the family ran downstairs, and next minute, there was no one at the window. It was just gone, the person we saw. And we couldn't believe it. But my family thought it was just probably a reflection from something inside the room, but we didn't know. And a few days later, me and my sister were playing out in the garden, and uh, my dad started speaking to our neighbour, and I remember overhearing this, and uh, the neighbour had said that we must have been able to get the house really cheap because of the suicide that happened there. And my dad didn't know about this, and he was like, suicide? And apparently the neighbour told us that the previous owner of the house had shot himself in the garden. It was an old man. And we couldn't believe this when we were little, but uh, that seemed to have happened. My boyfriend lives in a fairly old house, and apparently the first person who owned his house died in the master bedroom, which is now his parents' bedroom. So one night I was staying in his house, and I got up in the middle of the night to go to the toilet, which is on the landing. And his attic opening is in the toilet, and as I walked in, I saw that the, the hatch was down for the like, opening of the attic. I thought this is quite strange because there's a lock. So anyway, I went back into his room and I, I woke him up and he closed the lo he locked it back up and said, everything's fine, don't worry. And um, as he got back into bed and went to turn off his bedside light, which he turned on when he got up, the bulb shattered and glass went absolutely everywhere, all over the bed, all over the floor, everywhere. And um, as he went to go and clean it up, music started playing from his phone, which was on the other side of the room, charging. Which is quite bizarre. Anyway, the next day, um, we woke up and we went, we went to um, go shopping in town. And um, I distinctly remembering, remember turning off his TV as I left. The TV in his bedroom, as I left his bedroom. And then we got a call from his sister saying, why did you leave your TV on? And it was on, and there was the static. The static was on it, which was quite scary. From our visit to the press free, we have found out why Gloucestershire has been labelled one of the most haunted. Due to the sightings and learning more about the histories from the locals, we can now say Gloucestershire has been rated one of the most haunted counties in the UK.